Welcome back. We are still talking to people here in Act 2. We're not done yet, unfortunately. Next up is this lady here. Good evening, Dr. Maklos. Oh, good evening, Miss Bo. It's Dr. Miklos, who everybody has been saying is kind of a scary lady, so let's see if that turns out to be true. Do you know our editor? Mr. Augustini? I have only met him once or twice at social affairs. He seems to be very competent, that one. Dr. Carter? Dr. Carter is an odd one, if you ask me. He is so very interested in gaining personal glory. He doesn't seem to fully understand the beauty of what he has discovered. Why, the Amin-Ra artifacts are a symphony, a tribute to the wonders of death. Ah. Well, while I can't say I'm as enamored with death as you seem to be, I do agree that Dr. Carter is more in this for the glory than the actual archaeology. Dr. Carrington? Dr. Carrington is a quiet one. I don't see him very often. I'm certain, however, that he must have a poetic soul. What makes you say that, Dr. Miklos? I have seen him walking amongst the dead in the Egyptian exhibit late at night. I cannot blame him. It's better than moonlight on headstones. Ah. Okay, I'm beginning to see why people think you're weird. Detective O'Reilly? Ah, yes. Detective O'Reilly. I can't say that I'm overly fond of that one. He has little respect for the wonderful things in the museum, and he is too firmly rooted in this life. I do not believe that he likes the dead at all. Can you imagine? <laughs> yeah. To think somebody wouldn't like dead things. Hey, what? How about Rube? I am sorry, but I don't know what a crowd faller is. Ah, is it some sort of pastry? I guess she doesn't know him. Uh, she should know low fat. Oh yes, he runs the laundry down the way. He always manages to keep the pleating in my silk shrouds just right. Shrouds? Okay. John Bow? No, I'm afraid I don't know Detective John Bow. He is your father? That's nice. I admire the police. They get to spend so much time with the sick and the dead. And in New Orleans, yet with those beautiful cemeteries. Well, I can kind of agree on that based on what we've seen in Gabriel Knight. How about, um, uh, Ziggy? An odd little fellow, that one. He reminds me of one of the specimens in my dried rat collection. I'm not even going to be surprised that you have a giant rat, a dead rat collection. Yourself? Me? How sweet of you to ask about me, my dear. Well, I consider myself a simple woman. Just an echoing museum, a few hundred dead things, and a ferret for company. And I could be happy for the rest of my life. Well, with a little male companionship from time to time, that is. <laughs> okay. Hopefully that male companionship doesn't have to be dead. How about Yvette? I find Yvette to be a charming young lady. Some people around here don't appreciate her zest for life, but I find her quite refreshing. How about Heimlich? Ah, Wolf. 
He has some lovely scars, doesn't he? Just between us girls, I think he's dreamy. Why does that not surprise me? Ramses Najir? Mr. Najir is a very quiet one, isn't he? And so polite. Sometimes I wonder about him, though. I see a certain light in his eyes, like daisies, when she's about to kill a spider. I think I like Mr. Najir. Who's Daisy? I'm assuming a pet? Maybe that ferret she was talking about? The Countess? I don't know if I trust that one. She screamed when she saw my beautiful dried rat exhibit and cried out like a baby when my ferret Daisy bit her ankle. Foolish woman. Okay, so Daisy is the ferret. Good to know. I would cry out if some ferret bit my leg. The hell? Steve. Ah, the young Stevedore, Steve Dorian. He is a charming young fellow. I imagine he has some wonderful scars from working on the docks. Hmm. You are officially too obsessed with scars. Does she read the newspaper? The Tribune is an excellent paper. You are most fortunate to be employed there, Miss Bo. Oh, why thank you, Dr. Miklaus. Stick with the Tribune, my dear, and you will almost certainly go far. Their article on dysentery in the Herdanos of Spain was simply marvelous. Okay. <laughs> The police station. Oh, I find the police fascinating. They spend all their time trying to stop crime and murder, and yet they shoot people themselves. Interesting, isn't it? That's one way of looking at it. Well, that's laundry. I'm sure I don't have an answer for that, Miss Bo. Okay, that's kind of weird. That's just her generic, I don't know what you're talking about, answer, even though she does know low fat and goes there. The docks. I love to walk along the docks on a moonlit night and feed carrion to the rats. Such friendly little fellows. You just keep getting weirder. The museum. The lion decker is my home now. I never want to leave it. Its musty hallways and creeping shadows are in my very blood. Can you imagine spending an entire lifetime drifting through the land of the dead? That opportunity is mine, and I treasure it. To each their own, I guess. How do you like living in New York, Dr. Miklos? Well, I had always heard it was a city rife with crime and danger and murder. So far, I have not been disappointed. Well, you're the first person we've talked to who seems to actually like that, so... How about the speakeasy? Do you know anything about that? Yes, I am aware that many people enjoy going to such places. I personally do not. I find them too noisy and the people are too lively. I would like to get a good close look at some of those hedonous livers, however. That bootleg alcohol is quite strong. Of course you'd take that angle. How about our notebook? Ah, you are wise to carry a notebook, my dear. One never knows when one may see or hear something that will change one's life forever. True enough, I guess. The magnifying glass? You are wise to carry a magnifier, my dear. You miss so many of the good things if you don't look close enough. Imagine never seeing pores or lice or fungus spores. I would be perfectly okay if I never saw those things. The water glass? 
did you know that bacteria can survive on the rim of a glass for three days, my dear? Well, I do now. So, Dr. Miklos, has this been a good year for you? I would say, yes. Very good. I came here from Greece just a short time ago, and look at me now. Curator of the largest private museum in New York. I'm happy to hear that, Dr. Miklos. Tell me, have you noticed anything unusual at the museum lately? The whole museum is unusual, my dear. We are surrounded by dead things. Just walk around for a while and breathe in its wonderful atmosphere. Why, the whole place smells of death. Hmm. Uh, I just might do that. Have you ever noticed any dead things that, well, don't belong? My dear, every dead thing belongs. Dead things are our friends. That is not the angle we were going for. Dr. Miklos, do you have any idea who would want to steal the dagger of Amon Ra? Ha! <gasps> Very funny. Everybody, silly girl. It's a priceless artifact. Not only that, but it is said that the blade is an unknown alloy that can slice through bone like butter. Hmm. Um, I suppose that was a silly question after all. Let me rephrase that. Do you know of anyone with any particular motive? Well, Todd Smith and Ramesses Najir both wanted it very badly to return it to their homeland. But they are both so upset, it hardly seems possible that they could have done it. Then again, perhaps they are just fine actors. <laughs> that seems to be my reading as well from talking to Mr. Najir anyway. I haven't talked to Mr. Smith yet. You're an expert in Egyptology, aren't you, Dr. Miklos? Well, yes, I suppose I am. I have been fascinated with the ancient Egyptians since I was a tiny girl. They loved death like you Americans love baseball. I guess that's a good reason to like them. For you, anyway. Alright, well, I'm happy we're done with this weird person. Let's talk to... This guy? You must be Dr. Patar Shep Tut Smith. Nice gold onk you're wearing. This is quite a party, isn't it? I find it distasteful to celebrate thievery in the name of science. The artifacts in this museum's Egyptian collection do not belong here. They belong in Egypt. That's only your opinion. It is the truth. And the thieves who rob Egypt of its ancient treasures will find death waiting for them. Amon-Ra will have his revenge. I see. Well, hmm. Nice weather we're having. Yep, he uh, has kind of a one-track mind. But we should talk to him anyway. Sam Augustini? I do not know this individual. That seemed unlikely. Dr. Carter, you definitely do know, and I'm sure you have some things to say about him. You dare to mention his name to me? He is the blasphemous temple destroyer and tomb robber who stole the dagger of Amandra from Egypt. He will know the full force of the curse of the pharaohs. The curse of the pharaohs? What's that? The defilers of the great Egyptian tombs and temples will all die as a result of their crimes. The gods themselves will punish them. The great Amon-Ra will snuff out Peep and Carter's life as easily as I can crush a dung beetle under my shoe. How will this happen? Amon-Ra works in mysterious ways. You will have to wait and see. That almost sounds like a threat, doesn't it? 
by Dr. Carrington. I had hoped that Dr. Carrington would listen to reason. I had made another appointment to speak with him about the return of the dagger of Amon Ra to its rightful home, but this seems futile since it is no longer in the museum. Another appointment? You spoke to Dr. Carrington once already? Only by phone. He denied Egypt's claim to the dagger. It was hoped that a personal visit would convince him of our sincerity, but the situation has changed since then. Well, it is pretty hard to return something if you don't know where it is. Unless, of course, you stole it. Which is still an option. How about Detective O'Reilly? I believe he's investigating the burglary of the Dagger of Amon Ra. Perhaps, if he'd stopped drinking, he might have a chance at finding it. People don't seem to have a very high opinion of him, don't they? How about Crotfaller? I still have some trouble with your language. I do not know this Crotfaller. It is some sort of local delicacy? <sighs> that joke is getting old. Low fat. I do not understand the term low fat. Perhaps it is because I learned English in Egypt. It's a name, you silly man. How about our dad? The English longbow was a formidable weapon. The English won the Battle of Agincourt against formidable odds because they were equipped with longbows. I said John Bow, not Longbow. I've never heard of a John Bow. It must have been an American invention. Oh my gosh. Do you know Ziggy? Never heard of it. I guess not. Dr. Miklos. Dr. Miklos is very well educated for a woman. I would like her more if she were an Egyptian. I think that's true of everybody, in your case. How about a vet? Ah, a delightful girl. I keep asking her if she'd like to be my second wife. She is so very feminine and seductive and charming and attractive and... Okay, okay. I get the idea. You should try to be more like Yvette. Men would like you more that way. Men like me just fine the way I am. That's what you think. I find you quite annoying. Well, I don't care what you think, so... There. How about Wolf Heimlich? Heimlich is that annoying guard who works here. His fanatical devotion to his occupation is admirable, but he seems lacking in his mental capacities. Oh. That is not what I intended to do. How about your fellow countryman, Ramses Niger? Ramses I was pharaoh during the 19th dynasty, from 1307 to 1306 BC. But Ramses II made more of an impact on ancient Egypt. Ramses II was responsible for gargantuan construction projects which left his mark on the face of Egypt for thousands of years. I admire his great works and hope to emulate his feat someday. Actually, I was referring to Ramses Najir. Najir is... never heard of him. Are you sure you don't know him? No. I mean, yes. English is such a difficult language. That is almost exactly what Dr. Carter said. Were they both just reading from Wikipedia or what? Do you know the Countess? I have only met her briefly, but she seems to have a sincere concern about my problems. A charming woman. Nobody else seems to think so. Do you know Steve? Do you know Steve Dorian? He works at the docks. I don't associate with common dock workers, madam. 
I guess not. The Tribune. Never heard of it. Well, you don't live here, so not that surprised. The police station. So far, I find the police in your country to be very ineffective. The Egyptian authorities would have captured the dagger thief by now, and they probably would have cut his hands off. Cut his hands off? It is the proper punishment for thieves. Tradition demands it. We find it very effective in our country. Well, that just makes me happy I don't live there. I have not been in this country long enough to discuss the merits of your laundry establishments. Fair enough. How about the docks? I arrived there on the Andrea Doria one week ago. If I had known Dr. Carrington was aboard that ship, I would have spoken to him at length during the voyage. I guess he really did keep to himself since nobody seemed to have known he was on board. How about the museum? This could be a fine museum if the management would return its stolen Egyptian artifacts to their proper home. Somehow I knew you were going to say that. What do you think of New York as a fellow new er arrivee? Is that a word? I don't know. Since you're new here, what do you think of New York? Isn't it exciting? It reminds me of Cairo. Except that it's colder here and the people are obnoxious. So it reminds you of Cairo except that it's nothing like it. Hmm. Do you ever go to the speakeasy? My English is not good enough to speak easy, but I think it's improving. His English sounds pretty good to me, to be honest. Anything to say about my notebook? Taking notes is a typically American thing to do. In Egypt, we remember everything we need to know because our mental capacities are greater. I forget nothing. And you're humble about it too. The magnifying glass. It should come in handy for examining things. However, I would warn you to be careful about what you choose to examine. How so? It almost sounds like that's referring to something specific in the game, but if it is, I don't know what it is. Water glass. I can get my own drinks, thank you. I wasn't offering. Would you say this has been a good year for you, sir? No. The great treasures of my country's past are leaving Egypt in a flood greater than the Nile. As I understand it, artifacts only leave your country with the approval of the Egyptian Antiquities Service. Bah! The Antiquities Service is a tool of the British. If they want to steal something, they steal it, just like the ancient tomb robbers. But they will pay, just as the tomb robbers paid whenever they were caught. That almost sounds like a threat. I, Patash Uptat Smith, do not threaten. I merely carry out the will of the great Amon Ra. Well, I can say that I do kind of see his point of view. If I were in his shoes, I probably would not appreciate all of this stuff either. Have you heard anything about the burglary? No. Do you have any idea who would want to steal the dagger of Amon Ra? It has already been stolen once, from Egypt. I can see I won't get anywhere with you on this topic. Yep. How about Egyptology? Since you're an expert on the subject, what can you tell me about Egyptology? The study of ancient Egyptian history is of the greatest significance. Many of our modern religious customs originated in the ancient world. The time of the great pharaohs and of the great Egyptian gods was the peak of human civilization. Our modern society is a mere shadow of its former glory when compared to the pinnacle of human development reached by the ancient Egyptians. They knew the truth, and the truth was Amon-Ra. He led Egypt to world domination. 
Aren't you exaggerating just a teensy bit? I would not expect you to understand. You are not an Egyptian, and you are a woman. What's that supposed to mean? I grew tired of this topic. Speak of something else if you wish to continue our conversation. Okay, well, he seems pretty full of himself. Well, more of his country, I would say. Alright, there is one more person we need to speak to before we can move on. And I happen to know that person is over to the right. And it's this person right here. It's the Countess, in fact. Let's look around here quickly. This is the eastern portion of the Lion Decker Museum Rotunda. That's not surprising. We still have a buffet. We still have plants this is the east that we can't look at. And another it's urn. It's an alcove occupied by a giant urn. The giant urn is occupied by the cremated remains of Ignatz Lion Decker, who financed the construction of the museum. And I guess he also had a big ego because it needs a giant urn? I don't know. There's also a gift shop here. Spelled S-H-O-P-P-E for some reason. Is this the Middle Ages or what? It's the doorway to the gift shop. I guess they were try just trying to be cute because it's a museum. Uh, we'll check that out later. For now, let's take a look at the Countess. You see a short, elderly woman dressed flamboyantly and, you suspect, expensively and sporting a grotesque amount of makeup. In fact, when she speaks, you notice small flecks of base coat chipping off of her jowls and tumbling onto her furred collar. Well, that certainly paints an interesting picture. Let's talk to her. Hi, I'm Laura Bow, and I'm covering this event for the Tribune Society News Column. Good evening, Miss Bow. I'm the Countess Lavenia Waldorf Carlton. Please be sure to spell my name right in your story. For some reason, the Countess just capitalizes random words. Let's question her. Sal Augustini. I haven't had the pleasure of meeting him, but he sounds simply charming. I imagine a man who runs a newspaper must be quite wealthy, hmm? Of course that's where your mind goes. Dr. Carter? Ah, truly a man of great ambition and integrity, hmm? Ambition, yes. Integrity remains to be seen. Dr. Carrington, you appear to be very interested in him, from what we've been told. Dr. Carrington? I... what about him? I know very little about the man. Now that's odd. I could have sworn Mr. Dorian said that you met Dr. Carrington in a taxi when he arrived on the Andrea Doria. Yes, so what if I did? I mean, I mean, yes, I did meet him that night. Our families are, uh, old allies from the time of the War with Roses. I felt obliged to meet him upon his arrival. Noblesse oblige, you understand. Um, you just suddenly slipped into a completely different accent there. <laughs> Sounds very suspicious to me. I think there's more going on between those two than she is willing to let on. Detective O'Reilly. Well, to tell you the truth, dear girl, I find him to be a crude, uncultured ruffian. Not entirely unfair. I sincerely doubt she's ever heard of Crotfaller Tea Rhubarb. Oh, I do enjoy a bit of Crotfaller with my tea. Yep, it's that again. I doubt she goes to do laundry. I'm sure I've never met him, Miss Bo. I'm sure you haven't. How about John Bo? I've never met your father, dear girl. He's a policeman, you say. How... Delightful. Yeah, you sound so sincere. How about Ziggy? He seems a perfectly dreadful little fellow. Let's not discuss him. That suits me fine. 
Don't turn me close. My, she is unusual, isn't she, dear girl? I can't stand that horrid ferret of hers. I'm sure it hates me. I'm kind of on its side. Yvette. I am not interested in discussing that little trollop. Okay. Wolf Heimlich. Oh, Mr. Heimlich is simply dreadful. I think his tiny taste of authority has gone to his little head. Don't you, Miss Bo? From what little we've seen of him, that might not be entirely unjustified. Ramsey's Niger. Oh, he's a darling little man. Just darling. I'll have to take your word for it. How about yourself? Why, that's me, silly child. Countess Lavinia Waldorf Carlton. And Steve, he saw you on the docks, I think. What a lovely boy. He has such charming manners, and he's so handsome, hmm? I think you're a little bit too old for him. Do you ever read the newspaper? I'm afraid I haven't read your newspaper, dear girl. I try to avoid the news. I find it distressing. We live in such terrible times. Yeah, just wait a few decades. It will get worse. The police station. Well, they have a job to do, I suppose. <laughs> um, that sounded weird. Low fats laundry. Oh, heavens, my dear. My laundry is done by my maids. Not surprising. The docks. The docks are dreadful, rough places, Miss Bo. Simply dreadful. Um, okay. You were there to pick up, uh, Dr. Carrington, so I would have hoped you've had something more concrete to say, but I guess not. How about the museum? I think the Lion Decker is simply divine, don't you? Well, you were married to its president, but I guess you can't tell us anything more about that. New York is simply charming, Miss Bo. It has so much culture for an American city. Again, with the backhand, the compliments. Well, we know... You're probably going to deny it, but we know that... Um, she has been to the speakeasy because that flapper girl was waiting for her to do God knows what. I really don't want to think about it now even more so that I would have met the Countess. Miss Bo, you must be sure to avoid such dens of iniquity. They can only ruin a young lady's reputation. Right. I was more interested in what you were planning on doing there. Definitely seems to indicate something shady going on. Um, that's it for places. How about the notebook? Oh, you jot everything down. How very industrious of you. Well, I'm a reporter. It's my job. People don't seem to understand that. Magnifying glass. It's wise to observe what goes on around you, dear girl. I always do. I'm sure you do. Quite probably for gossip purposes. And the water glass. Well, I've seen many glasses tonight, dear girl. It is a party, you know. Yeah, I guess they're not rare here. Countess, has 1926 been a good year for you? Oh, no, no, dear girl. It's been absolutely horrid. My darling husband, Sterling, died this year, you know. I don't know what I'll do without him. I'm terribly sorry to hear that, Countess. Well, aren't you the sweet little thing? Thank you, my dear. Um, she was about to say yes, wasn't she? Maybe she's not quite so broken up about her husband dying, which would seem to tie in with uh, Yvette saying that her husband was afraid of her. Hmm. What do you 
make of the theft of the dagger of Amon Ra, Countess? Oh, it's horrid. Simply horrid. What sort of creature would make off with a priceless work of art, I wonder? Do you have any ideas about who it might have been? Oh, my, no! I try not to associate with dreadful people, dear girl. Sure you don't. I doubt she knows anything about Egyptology. Do you know much about Egyptology, Countess? Only a little, dear girl. I find it quite diverting. Oh, I guess she does know something about it. Not that she'll tell us, but... Wait, I forgot to check if these partygoers are happy or semi-happy. It's a fanatically happy partygoer. They're fanatically happy. <laughs> okay, I do enjoy that they... Um, Change the uh, description for them on every screen. It's a fanatically happy party goer. But all of them on this screen are all fanatically happy. So, pro tip if you want to be happy while at a party at the Lion Decker Museum, stand on the east side of the rotunda. I guess. I don't know. Alright, we are finally done talking to um, everybody. And now it's time to eavesdrop on people. Which, uh, we did quite a lot of in the previous game. In this game, it's really only done here, in this uh, part of the game. We do have to do it quite a few times. But we'll do it in the next video.